Spencer Chase Elliott. I was just looking at this little boy. Let me see that car. Let me see that. Do you remember collecting these cars when you were at his age? I do. Yeah, I had, had a lot of them. Can we sign it? Oh. All right. Oh, that was nice. That's not, you're going to get me in trouble. Oh, okay. We might, Chase said it was okay. <laughs> Look at kid. That was great. Aww. Now, Yay, Chase! Now, Aww. So, I'm just saying that you, the kid... The kid also wanted you to make it to Miami too, so I'm just letting you know. Hey, so, so do you have a little bit of pressure on you today, or are you just having fun with it? Ah, uh, no. I mean, we we definitely want to. Uh, I mean, I personally would love to be a part of the event next weekend. So I, um, you know, I, our our team and myself were fired up, and you know, this is an opportunity. Uh, we didn't have this opportunity a year ago. So, you know, I, I think for us to still be a part of the deal right now is, is definitely an improvement from last year, but to have a chance to go race for a championship next week is still very much within reach, I feel like, and anything can happen at, at these races and um, be a great day to do it. So we're going to try our best. Let's give a big round of applause. Woo! When you started the year off, almost a year ago, did you think you'd be in this situation? Like, honestly, I mean, we, we all want to be, but... Yeah, I honestly didn't see why not. You know, I felt like uh, you know, I looked at last season and I looked at the way that the way that we started the the, uh, the chase last year and, and so on. And we had we had some great opportunity last year uh, as it started. We had some really good cars to start the, the playoffs. I had a chance to win Chicago. Had a great car at Charlotte um, in 2016 and, and could have advanced through uh, some rounds with. Um, with not a whole lot changing. We had, we had a lot of things going on that, that definitely could have helped us do that and, and, and feel like I kind of missed out on some chances. We missed out on some opportunities as a team. So kind of coming into this year, we kind of looked at it as opportunities saying, hey, you know, we, we don't want to look back and be mad that we missed out on more opportunities and that we had a chance to go do things that we didn't. And that was kind of the theme of us starting these playoffs. And um, I feel like we've done a decent job uh, the playoffs. We had, we've had opportunities to, to run and compete for some wins at you know, uh, Chicago and, and Dover and Martinsville and some of these places that, uh, you know, ended up being pretty frustrating days, but at the same time we ran, ran good enough to be there. So uh, we got we to get through this weekend. And, and uh, Homestead's, like I said, still within reach, so we're going to try our best. And try to get there. Chase, I'm just, I'm just, while you're answering, I'm just like flipping out and like I see like, Hooter shirts everywhere. <laughs> and, and, I'm 24 here. I like it. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. No, and, and, and I'm just looking. What's it like for you to look out and say, it used to be you'd be buying other people's shirts or wore my dad's or whatever. And now, what's it like for you to experience people wearing your stuff? That's yeah, amazing. And I, um, you know, as I tell people, a lot of places, it doesn't go unnoticed. And I see it and, and I appreciate it. And uh, I don't just say that to say it because I'm sitting up here on stage. It really does mean a lot to me. I know uh, growing up in my house and, and my dad was fortunate enough to have a lot of great fans and, and people supporting him. Uh, and I know how much he appreciated it and what it meant to him. And to see that and to kind of see what uh, what it meant and, and, and kind of the, the differences that it made in his life been pretty special. So to see it from that side and, and uh, to be able to you know, see the hats and the shirts and things is, is pretty wild and definitely not something that I don't, I don't think I'm quite used to yet, but it's uh, incredible and, and I appreciate every one of y'all that, that have the right hats and shirts on. <laughs> uh, I see some out there that, that are worse than others, but uh, well, that's okay. Hey, look, you know, like I tell everybody, everyone, whoever you want to pull for is you and you know, it's uh, whether it's me or somebody else, if you have a genuine passion for to pull for that guy, then or, or girl, then then go for it. So uh, you know, I, I think it's awesome. But but again, thank you, and uh, we're gonna try our best to make y'all proud. Chase, yeah, that's my you had fun, it, it, and I had to almost stop what I was saying because the other day you actually went out in the campground and, and, and had some fun, and like literally, you didn't like just dress up and like go like like some guys do. You you're like, no, I'm gonna hang out with my fans. I'm gonna wear my fire suit, and I'm gonna do it right. How much fun was it for you to go and see like your flag, or that you know them having your stuff, and then you walk over? I mean, were they like, "Whoa, you got his 
Pretty cool. Um, flags matter. Flags matter. And when, when you walk around out there, it made it. Uh, luckily, it made it pretty easy to, to find some places when somebody's flying your flag. Right? It's hard to know, you know, whether I'm not going to just go up to somebody that might not like me. So you know, I don't. Know to, I'm not just going to walk up to a random, you know, Chevy. We were, we were looking for a Chevy truck owners is what we were looking for, and it was uh, it was a Chevrolet partnership. We were, we we're trying to find some Chevy owners and thank them for uh, for driving a Chevy, which why why wouldn't they? Great vehicles. So, um, so we were walking around and, and yeah, when you see a flag, it makes it pretty simple to walk up and say hey. And you feel pretty good about either the husband or the wife likes me. Now maybe not both of them, but one of them uh, had a pretty good chance. So it was a lot of fun and. Um, had had a great time. It was great to see some of the folks out there, and then not expecting you to be out in the campground was pretty cool. So I uh, wouldn't mind doing that. Uh, some races moving forward, we have, we have some pretty cool ideas uh, for that. So um, I encourage you to get a flag because it makes it easy. Uh, very good. So now I'm just curious, though, and Heather, I'm going to let you ask that question. But you're switching numbers, so now they're going to have to go get the new flag, so they're flying the new flag, right? I mean, I'm yeah, well, that no more of the 24s. Make sure they get the nine. Yeah, well, I mean, if I if I see the you know the current twenty four right now, I'll get the I'll get the hint. So um, you know, just because they're swapping numbers, that means I'm gonna hate the twenty four now. It's still gonna be uh, it's still gonna be a special number to me. And you know, it's, to be honest with you, I've kind of gotten used to it over the past almost two years now, and it's kind of felt more and more like home, but definitely not quite like home that the nine feels for me. And, um, it's it's going to feel right, I think, being back in that number next year. I think it's the right fit. Uh, something to be excited about, so I'm looking forward to it. I hope y'all are, too. Chase, we got Heather down here, and Heather has been waiting patiently to ask my question. What's your question for Mr. Chase Sunday? Chase, are you going to grow your hair out as long as Blaney's? Is it a competition now? Uh, and you and Blaney, like, you guys have, you're, you're both competitive guys, and, yeah. you're, and you're best friends. So, I mean, yeah, are you going to grow your hair like his? My hair was about as long uh, as his was a few months ago. Um, I, I got a haircut uh, right after the Darlington race, but it was, uh, we were pushing it pretty hard there, and I got pretty tired of, of my hair being that long, so um, <laughs> it was it was time to get a haircut. I'm sure he's probably getting pretty close himself, so, uh, but yeah, he's definitely got a beat on, on the hair right now, and the fast lap Friday, so I got some work to do. <laughs> Are you guys competitive, like, after a race? Like... Are you still friends after the race, or is there a cooling down period between the two of you? <laughs> no, nah, we're usually pretty cordial, I guess, when it comes to that. But you know, it's um, we got a pretty good relationship, I think, when it comes to that stuff. You know, we understand that you know there's going to be times where I'm going to have to race him hard, and it, and, and he's going to have to race me hard, and that's just kind of part of it. So uh, yeah, today being one of them, both of us having to basically win to to move on. So. Uh, we both understand that, and honestly, we really don't talk a whole lot about racing outside of uh, outside the racetrack, and you know, you know why? why? Why would we? So uh, we do it all the time, but um, no, we have a good relationship there. There's been times where we've gotten into each other, and, and uh, you have to have those conversations after after the race. But you know, it, we've both been doing it long enough that uh, I think we get it at this point. So. Uh, got to keep it straightforward, but don't worry, we'll race each other hard, so it won't be uh, it won't be much. What's your give today? Hi, Chase. My name is Rebecca, and I have a question. A lot of people do a job in their life that has meaning to them. What does it mean to you to be a NASCAR driver? That's a good question. question. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, I, I think for anybody that grows up and uh, is going to school and has a hero or has somebody they look up to, and, and for me it was my dad and, and some other racers, and uh, when you're a kid and you have your eyes set on doing something, you might think, ah, uh, you know, those, you never know what's going to happen or whether you're going to have a chance to do that stuff. But for me, I, I've never wanted to do anything else, really. I'd always wanted to race when I was little, and that was always what I, you know, heck, when I was five or six, always what I thought I wanted to do. And as you get older, I think you realize whether you really want to do those things or not. And uh, luckily for me, you know, I, I was surrounded by some great people, and uh I was never driven away from racing. I was always driven further into it, and I was always encouraged by the people around me to uh, to continue forward. And they always made me feel like that I could do it. And uh, you know, luckily things have worked out to be here now. But I think the most the, the biggest piece to me that makes it the most special is being a kid 
and wanting to do something and, and me being lucky enough now and having the opportunities I've had to actually be doing it now that, uh, you know, here at the cup level is, you know, what I want to do since I can ever remember. So I, I think that's the biggest piece that makes it special to me and uh, something I'll never, um, I don't know how you can ever, you know, be thankful enough for that, to be a kid and have, have a chance to go do what you wanted to do. It's pretty cool. Chase, I was just thinking with that question, have you ever thought about what you would have done if your road didn't take you to be a NASCAR driver? Did you ever think about that? Um, yeah, well, I I was uh, having to think about it a little bit there as we got, you know, towards the end of the truck years and, and not quite being certain uh, going into 2014. Before NAPA came on board, we really didn't have a whole lot of plans going into 2014 to race full time. So. Uh, so yes, the, those those conversations were very real around the house as to as to what I might do if you know if it didn't work out, and uh, we kind of got to a point where your dad wasn't going to continue to uh, you know push and race out of our shop at home, and understandable, you, know, you got to have you got to have the right partners to make this work. So um, at that point in time, I don't think I really knew what I would want to do. Uh, looking back now, I would love to have done something in aviation and uh, maybe gone gone somewhere down that road. Something I enjoy now, and, and um, you know, it, it's something I have fun with. Yeah. And uh, but then I don't—I wasn't as quite into it then as I am now. So uh, I don't know what I would have done. You know, they, they always say it's never work when you're having fun, though. You but when it's a job, then it all of a sudden it changes. And listen, man, it has been an awesome year with you. It's something to wrap things up. And I don't want you. It's like I want to just stay up here for another hour and talk. I know the fans want it. I know you want to sign a couple autographs, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands up. <laughs> Thank you guys. It's been, uh, been an awesome crowd, seriously, today. This is, uh, I've done, like, we've done a bunch of these this yeah. year, but this is uh, pretty freaking cool. Uh, I remember we were, we were, small quick story, so we were at Talladega this year, and uh, Dale's last race at Talladega, and he had this sea of people, a ton of people out here. It's like, much like this, and when I came up, a lot of us started to walk away, I'm like, well, thank <laughs> really hoping they might stick around and at least hang out for a minute. Um, but to see you guys here, uh, to hear my, my not very intelligent words for a few minutes, uh, I appreciate that and it means a lot to me. And, and, uh, Chase, but here's the thing though, what you don't know is that they've been lined up for hours before we were even open oh, well. to see you. So that's how cool yeah. your fans are.